Our story today is the story of pain. Why do we suffer? A young man in the Midwest was experiencing different types of pain and different types of uh, struggles with regards to his faith over a number of years. And he finally opened up about it and he mentioned that a family member of his had passed away abruptly, seemingly abruptly, may Allah have mercy on them. And they returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this was very difficult for him. He did not understand the foundation of the trial, the suffering, the struggle. And so he asked this foundational question, which human beings have been asking throughout history, why do we suffer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us so that we are not confused and also weakened in times of difficulty, so that we are giving, given strength and resilience when we go through trials and tribulations. That everything goes back to the purpose of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you in order to be tested. And the promise is that there is a reward waiting for you. If you pass this test, that is eternal, eternal bliss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us paradise. Allahumma ameen. What is the alternative then to suffering in this world if we recognize that it is one of the expectations and realities of this world? Do we expect not to be tested? Do we expect not to go through trials? Do we expect not to experience death when we already know by the one and from the one who created us and informed us that this life is a test and it is a temporary world? It is not the paradise that you are looking for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this life as a test and gave us clarifications about this test. And I want us to remember four things with regards to struggles and trials. Number one, the test that comes to you will not always be easy, but the reward is greater when the test is more difficult. So the test itself may be a test in a form of difficulty or it may be in a form of ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to experience that of ease and to pass the difficult trials as well. Allah says, we will test you all with difficulty and ease as a trial for you. That is your test. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to pass all of our trials and tests. Allahumma ameen. Number two, be careful not to confuse Allah's love with Allah's will. So when Allah allows something, wills and permits something to happen in this world and does not stop it, don't assume that that's because of Allah's love or anger. Meaning don't automatically interpret what happens in this world and assume that the difficult things are equivalent to Allah's anger or Allah's love. What do we mean by this? For instance, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates for people to oppress. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not oppress. Allah hates for people to disbelieve and reject the truth. And yet He allows, He permits, He wills for a greater wisdom, people to do as they will in this world. Meaning you have free will. That goes back to the test. That goes back to free will. That goes back to accountability in the next life. So people will naturally do things and Allah permits them to in this world. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like and He does not stop these things at times for a greater wisdom. So when you experience, for example, hardship, don't automatically assume, don't automatically think that this is Allah's anger for you or towards you or that you've done something wrong when perhaps you have not and it may be just a trial or a purification for you automatically assume that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does love you and Allah is planning what's best for you and Allah is purifying you and Allah is raising your ranks and Allah is granting you strength that you will need for trials that are to come that you don't know about today. But always remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never treat His creation with any kind of injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ He does not want His servants, His creation uh, to be disbelievers, to reject the truth and yet he allows it. And so you go back, when you go through a trial, go back to the life of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. You automatically know when you look at this example that uh, trials are not equivalent to Allah's anger. The Prophet wasallam, the most tested of people, and the prophets and messengers, the most tested of people. And yet we know what? That they are the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you as well, when you go through hardships, remember that this is a different form and manifestation of purification, strength, uh, increased ranks in paradise, a reminder to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a reminder to be grateful as well, a reminder about the nature of this life, an opportunity to detach from this life, or it could even be a blessing in disguise that you don't recognize in that moment. So it is a test for your faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, relieve us, and grant us the ability to pass our trials. Allahumma ameen. The third point to remember is to always trust in the promise of Allah that you can pass 
any trial that occurs in your life. Meaning what? Allah will not burden you with a trial you cannot handle. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not give you a burden you cannot carry. And oftentimes this ayah, this verse, this saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is misunderstood. This does not mean that you will pass every test or trial. Rather what this ayah means is that you have the potential to pass any test that comes your way. Now the, the actual passing of the test will go back to you. Do you want to pass this test? Do you have the resources that you will pursue? Do you have the mindset that's supposed to be constantly worked on? The mindset of positivity and optimism, accepting of Allah's decree, gratitude, and of course when it comes to logistical resources, pursuing the resources that will help you to pass these tests and these trials. If necessary and you need a resource, pursue it. But you have the ability to get through it. How do you know that? Allah will not give you anything you cannot get through. Now, a lot of people will receive these tests and won't pass the test. Why? Because they automatically assume they can't handle the test because of how difficult it is. And this is not to undermine or belittle any difficulty or any trial that comes your way. This is simply a reminder that when you do go through the trial, knowing and believing you can get through it is actually a component that allows you, and it's sometimes even the catalyst that allows you to actually get through it. And when you get through it, you're not just getting through it anyway, like the other one who is struggling. You're getting through it with also the reward for your patience, the reward of passing the test. And if you're going to go through it anyway, you might as well take the greatest reward from it and the greatest source of tranquility and peace and happiness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that certainty of passing our trials. Allahumma ameen. And finally, number four, remember the first words of the people of paradise. When they enter Jannah, some of the first phrases of the people of Jannah are mentioned to us in the Quran. And Allah tells us about these things so that we are given this reminder to keep our eyes on, our, on the prize, not on this life, not on worldly distractions. The people of Jannah, when they enter Jannah, amongst their first words are Alhamdulillahi alladhi adhab anna al-hazan Praise be to the one who removed from us our uh, worries, our anxieties, our uh, pain, our difficulties. And this is both the difficulties of the past life at dunya and also the difficulties of the day of resurrection. Why? Because the people of Jannah enter Jannah. May Allah make us amongst them and there's no pain after that. There are no trials after that. There's no suffering after that. And so if it is a place of pure bliss that you desire, a place of no suffering whatsoever, no pain ever again, then it is paradise that you seek. So work for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the highest levels of Jannah and allow us to get through the suffering of this world and the trials of this world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the optimism and the beneficial knowledge and the resilience and the resources and the environments and the factors that will help us all to pass these trials. Allahumma ameen.